Well, welcome. In this video lecture, we are looking at the book Think Python, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. We're looking at the second edition. The authors are Alan, Jeffrey, and Chris. I'm going to be doing video lectures. My name is Arthur Solomon. I'm going to be working with you throughout these videos. Thank you. Welcome to Chapter 7, Iterations. So in this week's lecture, we are looking at exploring iteration. An iteration is the ability to run a block of statements repeatedly. So the first major area was reassignment. Reassignment is basically taking a value and being able to reassign that value to a new variable. So for example, if we have x, we can set x equal to the value 2. We can, in 5 minutes, set x equal to 5. And a few more minutes, we can change what x equals. That's what it meant by reassignment. So for that example, we can have a equals b, x equals 7. Well, the issue with that is Python will use the equal sign for assignment. It is tempting to interpret a statement like a equals b as a mathematic proposition of equality, but it's not. Assignment is using one equal sign a mathematical operation of comparing a quality is two equal signs. So A equals equals B would be the mathematical formula to verify the conditions. So a quality is symmetric relationship and assignment is not. That's extremely important. Also, the order matters. Here we have a variable equals an, a value. That's legal. If we do a value equal to a variable, that don't work. You can't do a equal, you can do a equals seven, that works. You cannot do seven equals a. It always needs to be the variable is being set to a value. Reassigning variables is challenging and it becomes with some risk. So do be a caution with that. One of the major ways of reassignment is through an update. For example, x equals x plus 1. What we're doing is we are getting the value of x, we're adding 1, and we're updating the new value of x using the original or the old value of x, but we're adding 1. So remember before we can also use variables, we have to initialize them. If you do not initialize a variable first, you may get a unknown error or an unknown variable name error because they don't know that the variable is actually being initialized. So we could do that by setting like x equals to 1 or x equals to 0. That will initialize it. Then you can start doing the use of that variable. So one thing is when we're talking about statements if we're adding or subtracting one from a variable, if we're adding one, it's incrementing. If we're subtracting one, it's decrementing or decrementing one. We've already seen functions like countdown and print in that will use uh, iterate recursion. So again, the ability to do uh, repetitive tasks automatically, and again, repeating identical or very similar tasks without making errors, that's something that computers do well, that we people do very poorly. This is called repetition, or it's called iteration. We've looked at statements before. We've looked at if statements. We've looked at for statements. Well, now we need to look at a while statement. So a while statement would be like a, a countdown. If we did the countdown example, we did that with if uh, statements before, but now we can do it with a while statement. So here we have our while statement. We have our function for countdown in, we have a while in is greater than zero. Then we have our body print and we have our in being decremented by one. The while will go through this and when it is done, it will exit the while loop and then print our blast off. I'm gonna run my code and you'll notice it goes through five, four, three, two, one and then blast off. So that is how we can use our while statements. 
So formally, there are three main steps for our while statements. First, determine the condition if it's true or false. If it is false, exit the while statement and continue the execution of the next step. Again, this will be outside of the while loop. If the condition is true, run the body and go back to step one and it will start looping. So basically, it will go one, two, three, and it'll loop back to one. Then go one, two, three, and it'll loop back until something prevents or breaks the loop. If nothing breaks the loop, it's called an infinite loop. And we can do certain things where we can break those loops because sometimes the programs may not know when to end a loop, so it just keeps going. So what we can do is we can write a break statement. We can do a while loop while we're looking at input and we are looking for the input to be true, for example. Let me grab my pen. So this will keep running through until the end user puts in the response done. And until that happens, it'll just keep looping. Once the user puts the word done in, it will actually return a true response and it will then send a break. The break will actually exit out of the loop. So each time through, it will prompt the user, uh, do you want to enter an input? Then, if they don't do done, they will keep going back and it'll keep looping. Here we have our mathematical formulas. Loops are very commonly used in programs to compute mathematical or numerical values. This will result by starting with an approximate answer and iteratively improving on it. So here we have x plus two divided by x, all of it divided by two. So if we have an example of four and x is equal to three, so a equals four, x equals three, and we plug in our problem, y equals x plus a divided by x, everything divided by two, it will go through and it should find the answer to dot one six 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 six. That's a mathematical function that we could do manually or we could import the math functions and use the appropriate built-in math functions to do this for us. We have what's known as algorithms. Our algorithms it really depends on how we want to define them. Our book uses Newton's method of defining it and that's a mechanical process for solving a category of certain types of problems. The book also points out that executing algorithms are kind of boring. The more de interesting or the more nice part is it's about being able to design the function, design the algorithm. Normally, that is the main challenge, and that's the central part of becoming a computer scientist or within computer science basically explaining how you're doing something. That's the goal of the algorithm. This chapter is fairly short and we've already talked about incremental development. So with that in mind, we have to look at our debugging. Normally, the goal is to take our code and chop it in half. You go about the middle of the program and you analyze the first half of the code. And if there's an issue, you break that in half again, and you analyze it again. Normally, you only have to break this up six times before you have like single lines of code. And this is regardless of how large of a program you have. And again, I mean, if we're talking multi-million, it's going to be more than six. But for the average program, cutting a program in half to analyze it a few times will definitely drop the amount of code drastically. The more code means there's more chances for errors and the way more uh, possibilities of bugs. So also keep that in mind. So our glossary terms are things like reassignment, updating, initialization, iterations, infinite loops, and algorithms. We have three main exercises, copying a loop, building a built-in function for evaluation, and we're using a mathematic uh, formula for approximating values. I'm going to do separate videos for these exercises. If you have any questions, please reach out. 
That concludes this chapter. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and leave me a comment or a question. I'll try to get those answered as quickly as I can. Again, thank you, and I look forward to working with you in later modules.